Back in 2017, Elite Dangerous made headlines across the world as a brand new system was discovered out in the real world with a number of planets that could potentially harbor human life. And when people went into Elite, they found a very similar system located at the same exact location inside the game. And thereby, everybody was talking about how Elite Dangerous predicted a real life solar system. I'm going to tell you the story and we're going to dive into what the Star Fort got right and what it got wrong. So the system that we today know as Terrapis-1 was originally discovered back in 1999 and it was first published in 2000. Back then it was part of a brown dwarf survey where people were just looking for brown dwarf stars. And the system's original name was 2 bas w j 230 050227. Very easy to remember. At the time, there were no exoplanet survey done on the system, but it was merely catalogued and classified. It was only doing the transiting planet and planetesimal small telescope survey in 2016 and 17 that the system began to gain more popular fame. This survey used a method where planets that transit in front of the main star will slightly dip or block some of the light for the star and when we detect that block in light we can then use depending on how long the block is how steeply it goes down we can use that to detect um exoplanets and it was after this survey that the system was renamed to therapist one and the system got some fame because there was three planets located within the habitable zone that all had similar size it had similar um, gravity than Earth, and when they begin to try to do de detections of the um, density of those planets, it also looked like they would have a similar density to what we would have on Earth, indicated that the chemical makeup of the planet might also be similar. Obviously, this made it very interesting, especially because the system was only around 40 light years away. So people went into Elite and they looked for the system and they found one. Back then, it was originally called Core System XU-PA5-0. Nondescript, nothing special, brown dwarf system. It was a brown dwarf, so mass was not terribly far off what the actual star was, and it was also listed with seven planets. After this was discovered, Frontier went out in a subsequent patch, and they renamed and recreated the system to match the scientific discoveries, making it into almost what we have today. The star was changed from its brown dwarf over to a red dwarf, classified as an M8 star, matching the real world observations. And the planets were also updated and just for good measures, Frontier also added a Earth-like planet in the habitable zone of the star to try and match what was actually discovered in real life. However, if we go in and take a look at the system today, we will notice that it has in fact changed. This is the current state of the system and we see since that update back in 2017 we can see that at least four additional moons have been added. It's uncertain, at least for me, when those moons were added. I'm expecting it might have been part of Odyssey, but I'm not really sure when those moons were added into the system. Additional surveys was made of the system and published in 2001 in the Planetary Science Journal, where after we got some more orbit, we got more data, the information about the planets was refined. Unfortunately, these refined data has not been updated in the game, meaning that today the system is not actually 100% up to date with the latest um, scientific information. If we start by looking at the main star, the mass of the star is slightly too large compared to what is expected to be in real life. In real life, it's expected to be closer to 0.09 solar masses and not the 0.078 that's listed in game. But the worst one is probably the age, where it's in-game it's listed at 12.6 um, uh, billion years old. Whereas in real life, we're expecting the star to be around 7.6 billion years old. So there's about a 5 billion years discrepancy here between the in-game star and the real world one. The first planet called Trappist 1 1 is in the real world called Trappist 1 B. I don't know where A went. I'm expecting that they at some point maybe thought there was a planet closer and then realized there wasn't, so it was removed, but then they kept the original names. I'm guessing it's something like that, why it's called B, but I'm actually not 100% sure. 
But the closest planet is in the real world called Trappage 1b, and in game it's called Trappage 1 1. The mass in game is 0.85 Earth masses, but in the real world we're expecting it to be closer to 1.3, almost 1.4. So it is quite a bit um, quite a bit lighter. This of course also means that the gravity is way off at just 0 0.78, so 72 in game, with a real world gravity of about 1.1. In the real world, we are expecting all the planets to be tidally locked. As we can see, the majority of the planets also is, apart from the two innermost planets. I'm not counting the moons, as we don't have any real-life data on those. But those are not tidally locked in-game, whereas we are expecting them to be. But again, again, this is something that's extremely difficult to predict. This is just expectations, um, so I can, I can accept that as well. Another thing that Frontier got a bit off is the... Um, the orbital eccentricity, that is basically how elongated the orb orbital is, is an ellipse. If that thing is zero, that means it's a perfect circle. Here is about an order of magnitude off, where the in real world is a lot more round, where there's an order of magnitude more round than we see here. We're still in elite, starting with a 0 0.08, and in the real world one is, for the first planet here, is 0 0.006, so they are an order of magnitude off, but they're very round. Now, the key nine up, you might have noticed that in-game, all the planet has a very, very extreme orbital inclination. That is how far the planets are tilted off the plane in the system. They're almost at 90 degrees. And if we take a look at the 3D map of the system, you can see how absolutely insane this system is. Now, I haven't been able to find the real-world expected layout of the system. I have been able to locate the... Um, the inclination, and the inclinations does seem to match, but since the survey that was done with the planet was a transiting one, that must mean that the Earth must be in a position like this, because otherwise the planets will not all pass in front of the star um, for us to be able to detect them. So the only place that it makes sense for us is if we're looking at the system like this, looking at it straight in, and all the planets are just coming in from really weird angles, all kinds of sides. Um, and that might be the case, um, that could be just really lucky, that we are actually just perfectly aligned with, with the orbital plane of all these planets. But overall, it is a very, very, very odd system layout. But that might also be because the system is extremely small. Um, the outermost planet, as we can see here, only has a similar major axis of 0.06 AU. That means that even the outermost planet here still has a orbital uh, distance closer um, than Mercury. So everything, this entire system could fit within the orbit of Mercury in our system. It's a tiny, tiny little system, which of course also resulted in some extremely short orbit periods in case you have the innermost planet of just one and a half days. So I really want to give Frontier credit for updating the system to reflect what's happening in real life even though they haven't kept up with all the latest discoveries around the system. Now, if you find these types of videos interesting, when I talk about some of the more real-life space stuff, you should go and check out my other channel called Cosmic Curiosity. As a lot of you guys will probably know, at the end of the year, I'm shutting down this channel and I'm moving my attention 100% over there and I'm going to be doing a lot more real-life space videos. So if you like space, if you like real-life astronomy, Hop over to Cosmic Curiosity. I'll be sure there's a link in the description so you can go and check it out over there. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.